Ashley Bendixson, as Eunice uh, introduced me, I work for the District Attorney's Office doing um, communications, uh, but prior to that I worked as a victim witness advocate in court, and basically I met with crime victims, a lot of victims of domestic violence. I worked very closely with a lot of those victims who came in and really get to learn their stories and learn um, a whole multitude of reasons why victims sometimes stay in these abusive relationships to the point where it gets so bad that they end up in court. In addition to that, I used to work at the Women's Center along with Pamela, and I did some education there. And I've also worked at the Rhode Island Attorney General's Office doing domestic violence work in their um, unit as well. So if anybody wants to come up afterwards and talk to me, I'd be happy to, especially if you're interested in studying this field. Um, the reason that I am especially happy to be here with all of you today is because, um, as was mentioned, I was a victim of domestic violence when I was 18 years old. Now, I go back to even before then, and I think about high school, and I think about the relationships that I had. One of the greatest things, greatest mistakes that I think I made when I was in high school is that I didn't talk to anyone throughout my dating experiences. I didn't talk to my parents, I didn't talk to my guidance counselors, so I never felt that I had someone I could talk to or felt that I had an outlet where I could discuss these issues with when things weren't healthy. So by the time I was 18 years old and I got involved in a relationship that was unhealthy, I kept a lot of that to myself. Um, basically, I had met somebody who to me seemed too good to be true. And that's something that I've learned through my work and through my experience as a victim of domestic violence is that sometimes in the beginning it is too good to be true. You might learn throughout your schooling and perhaps over the next few years about domestic violence more and you'll hear the list of warning signs and things to look for and you know that respect is good in a relationship but the reality is when you first start dating somebody and first start getting to know them they are a very good person they're not going to be rude to you on the first date they're not going to punch you in the face on the first date because otherwise you probably wouldn't be dating them much longer but the reality is, you meet that person and they charm you. And you are just head over heels, happy, want to spend every waking second with that person. And then the abusive behaviors start to come out when you become invested in this relationship. From my personal experience, I was dating somebody who was also my age. Um, I think he was a year or two older. Um, we spent a lot of time together, and I wanted to spend a lot of time with him. But what I found that over, is that over time, he didn't want me to see my friends. Um, he didn't even like me going home and being with my family. He wanted to be around me 24-7, nonstop. He didn't like if I did things without him, such as going out or even going to work. He wanted to see me right up until the minute I had to work, and he wanted to be there the second I left work. It got to the point where my life was consumed by him, to the point where if I said I was going to hang out with my friends, he would get mad at me. And I felt like I was constantly walking on eggshells, so afraid to upset him. And the more he got upset and the longer I dated him, he started to get more comfortable yelling at me and putting me in situations where I felt afraid. Um, for example, if we were driving in my car, he would fight with me in the car. Um, even do things like throw the car in the park while we were driving on the highway. So even though he wasn't even punching me or pushing me or hitting me, he was doing things that put me in fear of my life. But because I wasn't being hit, I kept telling myself, well, this isn't domestic violence. My boyfriend doesn't beat me up. What I didn't realize is that still is domestic violence. That's still physical abuse because he was putting me in physical harm. I was blamed for a lot of his behaviors, and that's one of the reasons that I stayed in that abusive relationship is because he constantly had some kind of excuse. Well, I wouldn't have gotten so upset had you not done this, or I just had a bad day at work. And sometimes, even when he blamed me, he would do it in a way that was really sweet. For example, he would say, well, it's only because I'll miss you too much. I know you want to see your friends, but I want to see you today because I care about you and I love you. And those are kinds of things that you like hearing from somebody that you're dating. But what you don't realize is that these are little subtle ways that somebody starts to control you. So I ended up dating that person for two years. Um, and I constantly believed that if I kept at it and if I kept trusting him and working with him that he would become a better person and that he wouldn't hurt me anymore. The reality is two years later things didn't get better, they got worse. And most, like, most, most of the time without help and without seeking assistance and resources these relationships do get worse. And two years later I was physically attacked 
um, quite severely. I was attacked in my apartment by him to the point where he held me down on the ground and strangled me. I had to call the police. I had to get a restraining order for about five years to keep myself safe from him. But when I think back to day one, or even month one, or month six even, when this was my sweetheart and this was my boyfriend who I loved so much, I never would have, never, never would have imagined that two years later he would be putting me in such severe danger. So when I think about my whole experience and when I think about what it was like to be in that, and we talk about people saying, well, why did you stay? Why didn't you just leave? If he never wanted you to see your friends and was trying to control you all the time, why didn't you leave back then? Well, there's many reasons. And like I said, sometimes the control is subtle and we don't even see it until after the fact. And like I also mentioned, these things come up when you're already in a relationship. So you already made a commitment to this person and it's very hard to leave when you're already invested in a relationship. And some of those warning signs, like the controlling nature of, of, of who he was and his jealousy, a lot of those things I looked at as isolated incidents. Well, it's only because this happened, or, you know, it's not going to happen again, or he would say, it'll never happen again, I just had a really bad day. So I looked at these things as isolated incidents versus it being a pattern that I started to actually predict was, was going to happen. I knew when he was going to have an outburst, I knew when he was going to yell at me, or when he was having a bad day, and when I might be in danger. And this cycle of violence kept me trapped. So we'd get in these awful arguments, and, and, and he would just be absolutely terrible to me, but then he would apologize and make up for it, and then the very next day he was as sweet as could be. So I was very confused, and I didn't know how to leave that experience. Some of the other reasons I stayed too, and I think that's why it's so important to get into schools and to talk to other people, especially when they're, they're about to date or if they are victims of abuse, I thought I was unique, and I thought I was alone in this situation. And that's one of the greatest reasons I didn't talk to anyone, because I didn't think anyone would get it. I didn't, even, I didn't even really get what I was going through. And in fact, I didn't know I was being abused. And the only time that I ever finally saw myself as a victim of domestic abuse was when I was sitting in a presentation like this in my college classroom, and somebody came in from a local women's center and explained domestic abuse to me, and I said, oh my gosh, that's what this is? I just thought my boyfriend was a jerk, for lack of a better term, but it was domestic abuse. It was domestic violence, and I never thought that could happen to me. I didn't grow up seeing it, and I didn't understand what it was, so when it did happen to me, I didn't see myself as a victim. And sometimes we say that in abusive relationships, the victims become weak, and that's why they stay in relationships. They lose their self-esteem, or they're depressed, and they don't think that there's a better road ahead. But in fact, I saw myself as a very strong person. I saw my boyfriend as having all these issues, and I thought I was one of the only people that could help him figure them out and help him get over it, and then we could live happily ever after, despite all of the awful things he did to me. And I kept my promise to him, and I said, I, I will believe in you, I will work with you, you know, I understand, and I, I blamed it on his upbringing, he didn't have a father growing up, but the reality was I couldn't help him, and I, all I could do was help myself and keep myself safe. Working in court with victims of domestic violence, there's also so many other reasons that I didn't experience as a teen, but I think it's important to understand these barriers. Um, sometimes it's because you share a child with your partner. Um, sometimes it's because you're isolated and you have no one to talk to. Perhaps you're financially dependent. A lot of times we see relationships and marriages where a woman um, or a I mean, a victim can be a male or a woman, but 90% of the time it is women that we deal with. Um, you know, they share a child, or they, they rely on their partner for financial means. Um, or, like I said, just not seeing themselves as a victim. And I think that's one of the greatest things that we're trying to accomplish here today, is to introduce you to the issue so that you are aware of what you're going through in your relationship, so you can identify these things, and most importantly, know that there is help. I said I didn't talk to anyone, I thought I was unique, I thought I was alone. And I share my story constantly to students and to groups in the community, and I always get people that come up to me after and say, did we date the same person? Or, oh my gosh, this is what I'm going through. So the reality is, if you think you're in an unhealthy relationship, or a relationship that just doesn't make you feel respected and loved, you can leave it. And there, it, it's, it feels hard at the time, but leaving that relationship is the best thing that you can do for yourself, for your happiness, and for your success. And we're all here because we represent resources in the community, right down the street from all of you, and we're here to help. 
So if any of you have any questions afterwards or if you think you're going through a situation like I was, please come up and talk to me. Um, and I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, at the end. And I'll, I'll open it up now to the rest of the panel. Thank you.